Okay, so uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Turbo Lister to send a box to the Amazon Canada. Never made one of these before, so bear with me. Um, could be a little rough. We'll see how this goes. Gonna need a printer. Uh, print off the labels for the books. Gonna need a computer, obviously. Um, Home Depot small boxes, that's what I use. Shipping scale, uh, you'll need that to, obviously, shipping weight to send something in. And you're gonna need some books. First thing I like to do, obviously, make my box. So as I scan the books, I can just put them right in the box. Kind of saves a step. Okay, um, taped up the bottom of the box. I like to put three rows of tape on these. Just you're putting 40 pounds of books in there and they're getting shipped halfway across the country. Kind of suck if those blew open on the way. Anyway, let's get ready to put some books in it. All right, so we're gonna do this thing that I hate when other people do, but we're just gonna film the computer screen here because that's what we're doing. Uh, so download Turbo Lister, make sure you got the newest version. Uh, when you fire it up, you're probably gonna be greeted with a screen that looks like this. First thing you wanna do is hit new batch. Um, you can enter in some SKU details to identify the box for you. If you don't wanna do that, you don't have to. All I usually do is put the date that I sent the box in. Basically like that, enter it in down here because that's just what I do. Oh, sorry, okay, and then we're gonna hit create new batch. Um, so now you're ready to start scanning in books. I use workflow A, um, and I only do that because I don't do custom notes for each individual book. I have very generic notes here that apply to every book. Um, it really slows things down if you're typing in notes for each book individually. I also list everything as good, unless there's some water damage or bad creasing, then it will get listed as acceptable. With workflow A, all you need to do is scan the book and it's going to spit out a label. You put the label on it and you're done. Uh, I do have the auto pricer. Um, uh, shoot, where is that? I don't know. It's somewhere. Hold on. Let me think about this. Okay, sorry, so now we're back. Uh, so I leave this as, I have this in the off position, but I do use the sort of built-in repricer um, in TurboLister. You can set up the details here. Basically, it auto prices the books to the used buy box price. Um, if it can't find a buy box price, it'll default to $29.99. My actual repricing software will pick it up from there. Um, it just It's a system that works, and then I don't have to bother to price each book individually while listing. Uh, printer on, so as soon as you scan it, it's going to print out a book. Uh, if you want TurboLister to sort of calculate your profit per box, enter in your actual COG price here. I pay about two bucks a book. Um, all right. You'll have to find a different guide if you want to know how to set up your own notes. I'm not going to go over that in this video. Uh, okay, so now you're ready to scan a book. You click up here and you scan a book. All right, so you take your little scanner. This is the handheld one I have. I'll wait for it to turn on. Get ready to scan. Help it the other way around. And away, and it's not working. Why is that? Well, that's because your Bluetooth scanner isn't hooked up to your computer. I have a wireless one. Um, plenty of people have wired ones, but if you have a wireless one, you're going to have to hook it up to the computer. And to do that, I put the wireless scanner in pairing mode. So you just hold this button until it buzzes. Right now it's flashing. It's in pairing mode on my computer. I come over here. I right click. No, I don't. I double click. And then I hit this. It says it's paired, but it's not paired. So I go to more Bluetooth settings. Um, Bluetooth scanner up here. So I'm going to unpair it. I'm going to remove the device. And then we're just going to add it back. There we go. Now everything should work. So now I'm going to go back into Turbo Lester here. Make sure you're up here in the entry field, I suppose. And now we can start scanning books. Oh, 
So it's scanning, it's thinking, it's trying to add it to the box. First one usually takes a while. And there we go. Then we got a label. You're gonna put that label over top of the barcode on the book. Let me do that real quick. Okay, barcode's on there. You can take a second, you can flip through it if you want, make sure there's no money hide inside. No big highlighting, no bookmarks, no other things. You take that, set it in the box. Now you're gonna do that 42 more times. That's about how many books I fit in a box usually. So I'm gonna work through this list and I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so you can see I've added a couple of books to this box now. I got four books in there. And this is what I was talking about with the, the automatic pricer, is TurboLister will find the current buy box price and price your book to match it. Um, there's another one, another one. Show you this one, this is what I do. Again, so we take it, boom, we scan the book. It's gonna populate in Turbo Lister. It's gonna add it to the box. It's gonna print out a label. We're gonna stick that on the back of the book. Now, price tags and stuff. Um, some people leave them on, I definitely don't leave them on. As far as getting them off, a lot of people say Goo Gone, nail polish remover, bunch of other things. Honestly, I just use a good sharp paring knife. And it works just fine. You just got to be a little bit careful not to. Sorry, it's tough with one hand. Just got to be a little bit careful not to cut the book, obviously. But if you just go at just the right angle, it comes off, no residue, no nothing. As far as my listing process, that's probably what takes the longest, is trying to get price tags off. When I'm outsourcing books, I generally don't even buy books that are not in great condition. Somehow this one snuck through. It's got a bit of a crease in the back. Some marking here. Just overall, it's not in the best shape. So earlier in this video, I said I list everything as good, except for the odd acceptable. This one's going in as acceptable. So to change that, you would come over here. So instead of listing as good, you double click that. Now, again, I have another set of notes that covers acceptable stuff. That's what it says. Press pause if you want to read it. Um, so after you've clicked acceptable, it's kind of the same deal as before. Just scan the book. It's going to print out a label. As soon as it prints. What's very important here is you have to go back and you have to remember to click good for your next book. Uh, if you don't <laughs> switch it back, you're going to end up sending in a whole box of acceptable books and that's not what you want to do. Okay, and this is going to give you an idea of sort of how fast this process should be. All right, grab your book, <clears throat> scan the book. While it's printing the label, flip through it, make sure there's nothing in it. We've got a price sticker on this one. Take that off, flip it over, grab your label, stick it over the barcode. <clears throat> grab your next book. Scan the barcode, flip through it, find the price tag, and one more time. Scan the barcode, flip through it, price tag. That's it. So this particular book, right, I put my sticker over the actual book barcode, but there is another one on here from some other book selling shop. Amazon is not going to want you to have two barcodes visible. Um, so what I usually do is I just print off another label, just a blank label. And I will probably cut this in half and just stick it over the barcode, po barcode portion of this one. Basically, it's going to look like that when you're done. I probably kind of cut that a little straighter, but oh well. So after you've scanned a few books and you got one row in the bottom of your box, what I like to go through, what I like to do is just go through and sort them by size. So I'll put the taller books on one end, the shorter books on another end, and I'll show you why in a second. That might be kind of tough to see on camera, but they are. It goes from biggest to smallest. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep scanning more books and build another row in here. Okay, and this is why we sorted that first row by size. So the next two books that I scan for the next row, 
All right, you can see one of those. One of those is way too big to fit in this box. This one's a perfect size for here, but this one's too tall. So I would take that one and I'm gonna put it down here on top of the smaller books. And this just gives you an easy way to size everything and make sure that the lid is gonna close when it's time to close it up. Okay, here's another little tidbit of information you should know. This book here, uh, when you go to scan it, instead of printing off a label, it's going to come up, give you a warning, and tell you this book is restricted. It says you can't sell this book. Uh, the reason it gives is gating. Um, so what I do is I, if I get any books like this, I just set them aside, and we deal with them at the end. I'll show you how to do that too. But if, uh, if you get a book like this with sort of a weird barcode on it, and your barcode scanner is just not picking it up at all, uh, what you're going to have to do is manually type in the ISBN number. Right, so that number there, make sure you're looking at PBK for paperback. Um, and just take that number and type it into up here. Okay, so here's that one book we were restricted in earlier. By the time I scan the rest of the pile, we have, I don't know, five here that we're restricted in. So what we need to do is get ungated in those. Um, so what you're going to do is log into your Seller Central on the computer, scroll down, click over here, Add Product. Click into this text field here, use your scanner, scan the barcode of the restricted book. Uh, you can see it there. All right, so come over here. So this is where you apply to sell. So you're gonna click here, you wanna apply to sell in used condition. Click apply to sell. Come back over here, request approval. Now every book is gonna be the same like this. It's the same five questions. Um, so you're always gonna check the same box to select the top one for the first question and the bottom one for every question after that. Uh, and then you do have to enter in your email address at the bottom. As you can see, I selected the top one, and then the bottom answer, bottom answer, bottom, bottom. Type in your email address. Um, so after you typed in your email address and you hit enter, this is the screen you're gonna come to. Your selling application has been approved. So now you can go back to Turbo Lister. And click up here, scan your barcode. And now that book that you weren't able to send in a minute ago will now get accepted, added to your shipment, and a label prints out. So do that for the rest of your restricted books. Uh, so remember how earlier in the video I said when you mark a book as acceptable to make sure you select good again immediately, um, or you're going to send in a whole bunch of books as acceptable when they're not? That happened. Maybe it's because I was making the video, I don't know. This is the only book that I wanted to send in as acceptable. And then because I forgot to switch it back, these next four all also got listed as acceptable. So now what you gotta do is delete these from your box. Oh, delete. Anyway, you gotta delete them from your box and then re-scan them, but with the good tab selected and put a new sticker on it. Okay, once you're done scanning your books and putting labels on them, your box should look something like this. Just do your best to make everything fit in there uh, with no big gaps or anything. I do wish I had one or two more books to put in here, uh, but I don't right now. So we're just going to put some bubble wrap in there before we close it up. Okay, once your box is full um, and you come back into Turbo Lister here, now it's time to actually submit your shipment. So we're done with adding books. Now we're going to go to ship. And uh, this is going to talk to Amazon, figure out what warehouse to send your books to. Hopefully they all go to one place. Looks like they are. They're all going to YYZ7. No idea where that is. Don't care though. Uh, so once that's populated, you come up here. I just click this top check mark box. I don't know if this is necessary, but it's what I do. I click that. And then come over to here and click create shipment. This little window is going to pop up. If you care, this shows you your average sales rank, average sales count. These ones are a little low. I like to see that number higher, but there's some long tails in there. Profits all right though. And once that window's up, make sure the 2D barcode is selected here. Um, I, there is a way to do it. There's another way to do it. I don't know how, so I'm not gonna show you. 2D barcode. And then come over here, click create shipment one more time. <clears throat> So 
So what that's doing is in the background, if you go to the feed tab, it is now submitting that shipment to Amazon. Amazon's verifying that everything you send in, you're allowed to send in. Don't proceed with anything else until this goes from pending to complete. Um, I've had some boxes take 20 minutes. I've had some boxes take four hours. So just keep checking back. Once that says complete, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're back. The feed status has changed from pending to completed. So now you're, I guess, okay to move on and send this box in. To print shipping labels, you're gonna need to go over to box. You're gonna find the batch that you're working on. Let's see if I can zoom out here a little bit. Uh, and you need to add everything into the box. This step, I don't, seems unnecessary, but that's what you gotta do. Uh, so in this middle column here, you're gonna click new box. That's gonna create another box here. Go back to the unassigned box, select all your books, and then go move. And click move again. And now you're done. So now you click OK. Now this is where you're gonna print your shipping labels and you need your shipping information. So I'm gonna Put this on the scale real quick and come back with a weight. Okay, so we got the box on the scale and you can see it weighs 18.42 kilograms. Um, you're always going to have to round that up, so just 19 kilograms. Come back over to the computer, um, enter item weight. Uh, and I don't know why there's an item weight and a package weight column, but you need something in both. So divide it up, right? Items weight, we'll just call that 18. Package weight, one kilogram. Box dimensions. Home Depot boxes are 30 by 30 by 48. So you enter that stuff in, enter that information in, go down here, click estimate and accept. Oh, and I should point out, I'm printing on a regular printer. I don't have sticky labels, um, so these just print out on regular printer paper. So make sure you have the two labels per page selected. Okay, so that's going to pop up this screen here. You're going to want to print these off. Um, so just hit print. I'll be right back. So after you printed those off, you should end up with two pieces of paper. Um, one of these is the UPS shipping label. This is an FBA label used on Amazon's end. And then this one here is the QR code for box contents. So we selected QR code earlier in the video. If this didn't print off, you've done something wrong. I don't know what you did. You have to figure that out, but make sure that this prints off. Um, yeah, and then I'll show you how I put them on the box here in a second. I don't know if this is totally necessary, but I generally <clears throat> fill up any air spaces with bubble wrap. I get this big stuff from Home Depot, comes on a big roll, it's like 20 bucks. Okay, same idea as before, three rows of tape. I also do put two across the top, just added insurance. Okay, so we're back, we taped up the top of the box, and then we put these three labels on the UPS box. I've been told, think I read, it's important that the UPS label's on the right, this one's in the middle, QR code on the left. I've sent in probably 100 boxes at this point, never had any problems. Um, but I think that's about it. Once the box is in the state, you just take it to your UPS, drop it off, and wait a couple weeks for the books to get to Amazon. There's nothing else you need to do in Seller Central. You do everything through TurboLister. You size the box, you print the labels, you pay for the labels. Everything is done in TurboLister. Um, that's it. If anyone has any questions, I guess let me know. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video.